Well, hello everyone. Welcome to SW News. Welcome to 8.30 p.m. live. Uh, in this live, we take up stories, we take up news stories uh, that are of national importance and we discuss about them with our panelists. Today's topic is why religious harmony is important to maintain the uh, Indian economy. That is what we are going to discuss today. I think this is one topic that we have been discussing for quite some time. Uh, but today we are going to discuss this because a politician has also taken up this matter and he has also spoken about it. And I think this is the issue that uh, we have been highlighting for quite a some time. Uh, in fact, it was Chief Minister of Telangana, K. Chandrasekhar Rao, who took up this matter. In his speech recently, he said... And he, in fact, he accused Bharatiya Janata Party of spoiling the country's economy by disturbing the religious harmony in the country. He said, uh, and this was in reference to the hijab row that has been happening in the country for quite some time now. Uh, he said that Bangalore is the Silicon Valley of India uh, and the investment uh, that flows in the country, that investment that flows to Bangalore, and if such atmosphere is created, then would the investors come to a place where there is no proper law and order, where there is no peace and no ecosystem for economic growth? He also cited an example and he said, will anybody invest in Afghanistan now? He also highlighted that such attempts uh, to create the communal tensions in the country are highly uncalled for, especially when the unemployment is on the rise in the country and industrial production is low. So this is what he has been talking about. And I think this issue we have highlighted. Uh, Sujit, uh, Sujit ji will uh, tell us more about it. Uh, he has also joined in for this conversation. So let me quickly go to our panelists today. Uh, you know, Sujit Nair, our managing editor, has joined in. Tarun Chauhan, uh, you have been hearing him on our channel continuously talking about this particular issue, why uh, we should more be focused on unemployment figures that are rising in the country. He's a brand consultant. And of course, we have Dr. Arun Kumar. He's an economist. And today we will talk about uh, why communal harmony, why religious harmony is important, especially even for the country's economy. Uh, Arun Kumar, sir, I would like to first ask you this. What KCR said, what do you think about this? Is communal harmony in the country, is religious harmony in the country directly proportional to the economy, economic prosperity? So, you know, I think the link that he has made is to the investment climate in the country. Uh, investment is always something that is long run. Uh, it's not about the short run because once you invest, you know, the returns come over a period of time. So if you find that the harmony is disturbed, then the investment climate goes down. And when the investment climate goes down, then the uncertainty in the economy increases. And when the uncertainty increases, then investment will suffer. And if investment suffers, then growth rate would come down and the employment generation would be uh, difficult because without growth, you know, you will not have uh, more employment generation. And therefore, he's correctly flagged that in a situation where today, the economy is down, inequalities are very high, as the price survey shows. Uh, unemployment is uh, very high. Uh, it was at a record high uh, even before the pandemic, 45 years uh, high point. And then when the labor force participation rate is down, it's going down. Uh, other countries, uh, similar countries have a labor force participation rate upwards of 60 whereas we have below 40. So, you know, large number of people simply seem to have given up on uh, looking for employment. And that's why the labor force participation rate is down. So given all this, what we should be focusing on is creating more employment for our young people. Now, this budget only talks about creating under Atmirbar Bharat scheme 60 lakh jobs, which means 12 lakh per year. But as per my estimate, about 150 lakh children enter the job market every year. So forget about the backlog of, you know, crores of uh, people who may have given up looking for jobs. Even those who are now entering the job market, if they don't find jobs, then you'll have a situation which will be very explosive. And therefore, investment would be further set back. Investment, which had peaked in 2012-13 at about 36%, had fallen even before the pandemic to around 30%. And during the pandemic, it fell further. And as the data from the RBI shows, capacity utilization is still below 70%, at which rate 
you know, some industries where demand is there will uh, invest, but other industries like contract services, etc., they will be investing less. And when the investment climate goes down, even those uh, companies which are doing well, even they will uh, not invest more. So in other words, uh, what uh, Mr. KCR has raised is absolutely right, that we have to think about improving the investment climate. A major component of that is communal harmony. A major component of that is a stable uh, youth population, which does not lose hope, which does not become despondent. So all these things have to be looked at very carefully if we want you know, a, a stable investment climate and a better growth in the economy. <laughs> Issue. I think Aarti, um, we've lost Aarti. Oh, yes. Aarti, you're back. Okay. Yes. So KCR also spoke about one important aspect of investment, uh, investing in a country. He said that there should be peace, there should be law and order. So I think I would like to know more about this from Tarun, sir. How important is law and order and peace and, in fact, religious harmony uh, for a business climate? <clears throat> I think uh, Professor Arun Kumar has summed it up very nicely. So if I say something beyond that on this subject, it will only be adding value. I rather build on what he said, and I think it's very, very important. Uh, today in the world of uh, social media and digital, it does not take too long to trigger insecurity. Uh, it happened in Egypt, a government fell. It happened in the US where the black movement happened. Uh, people run away, people go away because people are in the business of business. They are not in the business of politics. So if you look at all the stable economies globally, if you look at any stable economy globally, in spite of the pandemic, they've been very stable because the, the image of that nation is not decided by the politicians. The politicians and the image of the nation are two different things. The problem that is currently going on and why KCI had to intervene is because South India predominantly is a peaceful area. If you go to Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra, they're quite peaceful areas. They are not very complicated, which is why industries prosper there, which is why technology comes there, which is why lots of good things happen over there. He He's smart enough to understand that that can't be unstable, that can't be messed with. Hyderabad used to be a very communal city 30 years back. For 30 years, we've never had communal rights in spite of the governments because people have realized that politicians will come and go, but we have to exist. So Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, they are very, very stable places. And this is, uh, trust me, these images travel world over and they travel overnight. You don't have to be an Albert Einstein to understand that. So you, you can't do things like this. You can't mess around with uh, images that are not fair, not correct to the country. Why would you do that? I just don't understand this. First, you had Dharam right. Sansar. Then you have this. Hmm. I mean, what are you doing? Hmm. I think this is an important point, Sujit, sir. Uh, as he said, first there was Dharma Sansa, then I think all the international media also covered it. Uh, uh, then now there is this hijab issue, which is also making it to international headlines. KCR uh, being a neighboring state of Karnataka and this issue, which has also reflected in Uttar Pradesh and Aligarh, there are some universities there uh, where students are wearing bhagwa shawls and coming in protesting uh, hijab wearing girls. Uh, the same situation is happening in Madhya Pradesh also. So do you think that uh, he kind of sensed it that such kind of situation also might arise in Hyderabad, which is uh, again another tech hub? See, Aarti, uh, you know, there was a, and I don't know if uh, Professor uh, has read this. See, there was this uh, research done by Bristol, uh, uh, Bristol University, where they have actually proven the fact that, you know, countries which has, which has got, which has, which are communally harm, harmonious, countries which, which, which has, which, which, which coexist with a different religion, these countries develop faster. Okay, so the economy is directly related to the, the communal harmony in a particular in a particular country. So now this is something which is proven. Now the fact remains that see whatever there are three things that is happening. First and foremost is nobody is going to invest in your country if you if you if you have uh, problems like this. If you have communal issues like this, who would want to invest in a uh, uh, in a place like this? Number one. Number two is even your local investors, people who are otherwise staying here, citizens of this country, may not look at you as an investing uh, a, a, a place to invest. Would take their monies elsewhere. So so that's the second issue. 
you know what is the third issue and the biggest issue that is that we are going to face very soon you see internationally our people who have gone out who have gone to other countries to work to earn their two square meals to send foreign remittances to india these people are going to face a lot of problems because they will be looked down on uh by 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 these by these people from these countries these countries will 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 definitely be looking down on them number one number two is there will be some kind of a a a, a, a racial or demarcation you know that these people will face as 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 time progresses as life progresses you see exactly like how muslims are facing uh, you know various uh, in various airports and various uh, uh, uh countries you see that's what's what's going to happen and this is something that we need to kind of understand and realize now uh arthi yes well um there is one interesting quote um in an article in bloomberg alisa ayers senior fellow for india pakistan and south asia at the council of on foreign relations uh she was quoted as saying that the protest cement the view that india remains too fractured and unable to rise above the domestic cleavages people do worry about the social instability and its significant cost so in the past couple of years we have seen there was a ca protest especially in the second uh, uh, you know second nda government uh, we have seen that protests uh, were happening in the country uh, over ca and nrc farmers protest were there and now uh, the protest over hijab it is also spreading across the country so does this uh, protest frequent protest hamper india's image as an attractive investment destination arthi who is the question i think the question is to professor uh, uh, sir it's the question is to you okay okay uh so you know uh, as i said earlier it, investment is all about the future and if the future seems bleak then investment would come down uh so whenever you have a disharmony of any kind whenever the body politic is fractured and there's conflict then it means that the investment climate is not suitable for long term investment uh so there are two things one is you know the government can give concessions uh which will attract investment the other is that in spite of the concessions uh what you may find is that you your future pr prospect of profits are going down because of the problems in the country so there is a sort of a conflict you know between these two uh, uh things uh that is uh, there uh currently what has happened is that in india because of lack of demand uh investment climate had already deteriorated capacity utilization had already fallen now in that situation when you add the conflict then even though you may promise more concessions you may give higher uh, you know uh, profitability to whoever is investing even then they will not invest for instance uh, in 2019 the corporate tax rate was cut very substantially uh, and it was hoped that that would result in greater investment by the corporate sector because our investment had dropped but instead of investing more uh, they actually used that to retire their debt now that you know benefited the companies their profitability has gone up as the rbi data suggest you know in spite of the pandemic the corporate profit as a total has gone up by 20 24% you know uh, but yet investment would not come unless demand is there if your capacity utilization remains low then you know uh, why would you invest more if i can produce 100 cars but i'm selling only 70 why would i invest more to produce 110 cars uh so this investment climate is what is getting affected and when the bloomberg report says that it is the investment climate that has uh, been affected because of the fractured uh, body politic uh, whether it be the youth protesting whether it be the religious uh, disharmony that is being created as ksr has correctly flagged all that is going to result in a lower investment rate in the economy lower profitability in, in the economy and that would mean uh, we would continue to suffer the problems that were there pre pandemic and the recovery from the pandemic would also slow down sir i uh, i want to ask you one question before i go to the <coughs> sir uh, isn't the consumption also going to come down because finally uh, if this is the status the, 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 there is there will be no consumerism that uh, that happens 
uh, obviously, if there is no religious harmony, if there's no peace in the society, isn't it? Yes. So, you know, uh, consumption would come down for economic reasons as well as social reasons. You know, uh, when the social situation is uh, difficult, people will try and conserve their incomes because you don't know when things will go bad. So the positive aspect, you know, that leads to consumerism, uh, that would go down. However, more importantly, given the massive inequality, the price survey points out that the bottom 60% had lost income. And the poorer you are, the more income loss you had. Uh, the top 20% gained incomes. And of that, also the top 1% has gained very substantial income. So when disparities go up, demand comes down in the economy because the demand is less from those who do the mass consumption. The well-off don't consume so much. They save most of their income. So therefore, you needed to give purchasing power in the hands of the bottom 60% in the current situation, which has not been done. Uh, we are continuing with the policies of supply side, which lead to concessions to businesses and so on. So in other words, the demand coming down for social reasons, demand is also coming down for economic reasons. Right. When the income disparity increases, when investment goes uh, less because of the problem of demand, then the growth rate becomes less, then the employment generation becomes less. As I said, for 150 lakh children entering the job market, we are not even providing 10, 12 lakh jobs. So where would the rest go? They would go into the unorganized sector because in India, we don't have social security. So we can't say that we'll sit at home uh, and die and we'll not work. So people will do some work. People will do headload work. People will pull a rickshaw. People will you know, do something and that will be counted as employment. But that's not the real employment. That's at a very low level of income. People in agriculture, where there's disguised unemployment, they simply sit there and you know do some weeding and do some other thing but actually at a very low level of productivity, almost zero productivity. And therefore, this disguised unemployment and underemployment has risen dramatically in the country. We don't actually capture it. And that's why, unfortunately, the employment data is not reflective of the true position in the country. Whether it's CMIE data or it's the government data, they're not reflecting the correct position on the uh, uh, um, unemployment, uh, which is actually reflected in disguised unemployment and underemployment. And wages remain low. So even if you get the, uh, the number of hours of work, you know, if you multiply by wages, then your total income is not very high. And when your total income is not very high, your consumption will be low. So there is no option but to increase incomes at the lower level. And that's why the, the World Bank recognizing this problem globally has been talking about the universal basic income. So universal basic income says that you have to give to the lower segments of population certain money in hand so that they can de demand, they can place demand in the market. And if you look at the rich in the US, Warren Buffet in 2011 said that the rich have to pay more taxes so that, you know, we can spend on the poor so that, you know, uh, the economy does better. Now that uh, was supported by the American rich, the Italian rich, the French rich and the German rich. But unfortunately, in India, the Indian rich have not said anything about it. This was again repeated by Warren Buffett in 2018. And he's been saying that he earns billions. His secretary earns only $100,000. And she has a higher tax rate than he does because there's so many concessions that the well-off sections get on investment on their income. So he says for the, the health of the capitalist system, we have to give more uh, taxes so that we can uh, transfer it to the poor people so that the demand increases. Now, recently also about 15 days back during the pandemic, also the same thing has been said by the rich, you know. So globally, now the rich are saying that we need to pay more direct taxes so that the demand in the economy can be raised, money can be put in the hands of the poor people so that they can consume more. And that is what uh, needs to be done. Tarun. I want to ask you a question. Thank you so much, Professor. I, I want to ask you a question, Tarun. Tarun, uh, brand, uh, brand India reflects every brand that comes out of India, isn't it? Which means what I mean to say is if you want to have an idea uh, uh, as a brand out of India, then the brand India also plays a very vital role. For instance, a brand Afghanistan cannot get a brand Google uh, from that particular market. You need to have a brand United States to get a brand Google out of that particular market. So what I, I'm trying to say is only a good brand can generate a good brand. Now, how much does the what what is happening here 
affecting not only india as a brand but how much of it is affecting brands which are now this entire concept of start up india and make in india and do in india and all of that how much of it is that uh, how much of it is this particular uh, 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 image of ours affecting it so uh, let me let me first respond to the ktr kcr part okay then i'll respond to your part your question uh, ktr kcr sun is quite a network guy i think he hangs out with uh, a lot of corporate guys very closely because he wants to bring investment into into hyderabad uh, my sense is that since half the ceos globally are from hyderabad google ibm microsoft all ceos are from hyderabad they would have called him and asked him boss what's happening in your country so which is why ksr actually had to come in the open and respond to what's going on uh, because as a politician normally you don't respond yeah uh, now to answer your question sujit <clears throat> any brand in the world whether it is mcdonalds whether it is uh, apple or it is nike the source country becomes very very important because the origin of a brand like if you look at uh, japanese brands japanese brands are known to be brands of high quality precision because that country stands for precision uh, if you look at italian brands they stand for fashion because the country stands for fashion if you look at uh, you know each country gives if you look at french it's all about uh, style and whatever yeah the country gives a lot of value to the brand for it to operate globally a brand on its own will find it very difficult to operate globally uh, in india for the last 20 25 years brands like bajaj dabur uh, lots of brands went global they went to many countries because there was a a source credibility of india being a a, a kind of a mass provider of solutions so that value is being eroded when we start doing these kind of things when india brand stands for something that helps companies that go global that link is breaking now because the conversation is completely shifting to unnecessary things and that is where i think it will hurt a lot of indian multinational companies i'm not talking of global multinational companies i'm Correct. talking of indian Correct. multinational companies abroad uh, whether it's a budget absolutely which is what even i was mentioning yeah they will 100% Doctor Sab, I want to, Doctor Sab, I want to ask you. You attend a lot of uh, 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 meetings. You attend a lot of uh, thinking sessions, uh, discussions, planning sessions. You see, what is the government thinking, Doctor Sab? Doesn't the government understand that this kind of issues it may win them elections, unfortunately, but that will have huge impact on the economy. end of the day this government also has to run the country end of the day this government has to also provide do- job you see it's already 6 6 years 7 years for the next 20 years they can't blame it in, on nehru so they have to provide jobs so my question uh, uh, doc sab is to figure out uh, uh, don't they understand this concept well obviously you see they have uh, what they think is a winning uh, you know uh, combination now uh, where you know uh, this idea that you know we will divide the people and therefore we will be able to win elections uh, that you know has become very central uh, to their uh, thinking uh, and they think that this will continue uh, to them you know that agenda uh, of uh, hinduizing the the country that seems to be more important than what happens uh, to jobs or what happens to the e- economy or the country's image uh, <clears throat> to a certain extent the country's image they they have cared about at times you know when uh, there have been pressure from abroad they have uh, worried about it but i think you know the vast number of people who are part of their uh, you know make up they you know uh, feel that uh, uh, they don't need to worry about the rest so you know it, it's a very limited vision about a country uh and i think because of the limited vision about the country they are not reacting i mean th- think about it the prime minister has not reacted uh, to you know some of the kind of things that are being said if he had taken a stand uh i think you know the forces that are uh, pushing this religious divide they would not have dared to uh, come out in the open the way they have in the last 7 8 years so it's is a larger forces which the prime minister represents Uh, which are pushing this agenda uh, which is going to be very detrimental to the country as we are discussing but at this point of time it seems they don't particularly care uh, if they had cared they would have stopped it the prime minister the home minister they would have stopped 
these kind of things and it's possible to stop these kind of things if the prime minister and the home minister and the other uh, big wigs that uh, take a stand but unfortunately you know this government is very much dependent on uh, the top uh, they look for signals at the top and therefore you know when the signals don't come they think that's perfectly okay and at the bottom you know and uh, i'm reminded you know of uh, this uh, movie called one flew over the cuckoo's nest or where you know at the top you know uh, everybody had all the right ideas about how to treat the people in the mental asylum but as you went down they were knuckle busters you know because the message does not filter down so if you Correct. don't even ma make a, a noise about it then the message is this is all right what what we are doing is all right so the 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 uh, the rot has gone deep down where large number of people uh, are getting affected by it and also because of very poor quality of education in the country uh, especially for the destitute and the poor their understanding about the society is very weak and therefore you can fill them up with all kind of irrational ideas like you know the glorious past was there and we are going to uh, be uh, you know uh, so you don't have hope for the future but you think that the glorious past was there and you can live on that glorious past you know uh the uh, scientific temper is missing you know so you can suggest to the poor people that you know we had all the science we could you know do intergalactic travel because you know valmiki could appear wherever you know in the galaxy you could you know put the elephant's head on a human being so we had great uh, you know surgery that was available you know uh, vyas could recite what was happening in mahabharat so we had internet so everything was there in the past so the past was glorious you know so on that count you can spread all kind of unscientific ideas you can you know uh, uh, capture their imagination that this is the way to go now i put the blame on 70 years of very poor education we haven't emphasized education you know very poor employment generation we have not generated the employment that we should have uh, generated in the last 70 years so the youth uh, is very very much um, you know uh, affected by this uh, despondency by this uh, unscientific uh, thinking and that's what i think is being captured by the current ruling uh, uh, elite dispensation correct D dr saab uh, uh, tarun i want to ask you a question dr saab sp spoke about three things dr saab spoke about percolation of of uh, a direction giving a direction to the to the bottom uh, that is not happening dr saab spoke about uh, employment the youth are directionless not only dr saab even uh, the economic uh, forum uh, the world economic forum spoke about uh, are indian youth being disillusioned the third thing uh, dr kumar spoke about was uh, was the fact that you see there is there is you know nobody there to stop what is happening uh, in the bottom the, the rot there is nobody to stop now tarun i want to ask you does the top want this rot to stop let's 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 talk straight does the top want the this this rot to stop See, Suji, this government uh, for the last seven years is like a it's like a telecom brand. They are in your face all the time. They are sitting in your pocket all the time. I don't remember ever, you know, uh, in all my corporate life that I was so involved with the governance of a country. I had no idea who the members of parliament were. Their life went on, our life went on. But the problem today is that there's so much into your life. Now, like what what doctor is saying. when you don't when you're not able to generate employment what do you do you give them other reasons to do time pass what are other reasons to do time pass what is currently happening in the country if people were busy if people had jobs and people were doing other things in life a, a ceo of an fmcg company says that we need to have a narega program for urban poor how bad can it get how bad can it get it can't get worse than that. it is it i mean it's a reflection of the state we are in he is saying narega needs to be implemented in urban india for the urban poor we are not able to generate jobs for the urban poor yaar forget rural poor correct so i think correct. the problem is very simple the problem is that you have serious issues in this country to do with employment to do with a whole lot of things professor has outlined but how do i not answer those questions i cannot i correct. don't answer those questions you think they're busy with something else Absolutely. And how do you keep them busy? Absolutely. You keep them busy by all these unnecessary brain dead things. These are absolutely brain dead things, yar. Professor, I want to ask you a question. Professor, this concept of economy, wherein you have limited uh, resources and unlimited wants, this concept of economy, 
in this where does this religious fanaticism fit in sir how where does it fit in and 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 how is it how can it be resolved uh, in an economy so you know uh, we we will always have limited resources uh, given the consumerism that we have uh, our resources are limited not for the uh, needs of the poor people what do the poor people need they need a place to live they need education they need health they need energy they need water and you know that can be provided within the economy for that we don't have shortage the shortage of resources comes for the uh, resource consumption by the elite in the country uh, which is consuming bulk of the resources of the country uh, so the resource shortage is uh, coming from there uh, the country itself is not a uh, resource short uh, for the basic needs and as gandhi said there's enough for everybody's need but not for everybody's greed but what we have been doing is we have been promoting greed uh, in the country and that you know is uh, not something that our environment or our you know uh, nation can uh, really Dr. Uh, yeah. take up doctor sir so doctor sir sorry to interject i am extremely sorry to interject but i wanted to ask you see if you are even spreading greed in the country i can understand okay you are not uh, uh, providing for the need we are providing we are we are having greed in the country all that i can understand but here you are not providing greed you are not providing need you are providing an emotional factor which is communalism that is what is actually yeah. keeping the country busy which is where yeah. i don't understand where does this how does this fit in yeah no so i i was coming to that you know so I, actually our resource shortage is because of the consumerism and therefore we have to import and we are not able to export enough and that's why you know there there appears to be a resource shortage in the country now when you have religious uh, uh this, this struggle and and so on and so forth uh, then what you find is that the resources become even more short because it's destructive of the resources so the resource shortage increases and the burden of that is borne by the poor people they lose employment they lose incomes and therefore the resource generation becomes actually uh, is actually set back so what you are asking is that yes the religious uh, discord that we are seeing will actually affect the resource generation in the economy and the already short resource economy will become even further short of resources and that will then feed back into the despondency of the uh, marginalized sections in society and that will then feed back into the kind of religious uh, polarization that is taking place because there are group of people who are interested in cre creating the religious polarization so in the uh, you know when there is despondency then religious polarization becomes easier to uh, create tarun so, so, so such an interesting analogy isn't it uh, tarun you know like the doctor said uh, you see you not only have a problem with consumerism because of polar because of religious polarization you also have problems in terms of production because of religious polarization you also have your your resources are going to get hit now when are we going to understand this and how do people make uh, the general people understand how do the uh, how how would the opposition for instance would make the people understand it i i i think the opposition is not getting it there at all so i think we should not even depend on them uh, because it's been now quite quite a long time by now they should have got the act together they are just not getting their act together uh, and i think most of them are falling into the trap of what these guys are setting up for them Uh, if you look at the whole narrative in the current uh, four state elections it's all about the same correct i think the 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 way to only handle this whole issue is a whole lot of non political people need to start talk like like professor like what he says should become mass information this is this is real what is real real is family real is income real is salary real is consumption these are real issues now whether someone flew something 25000 years back how does that matter what is important is today today we have unemployment go to rural india it is distressed it's unbelievable how it is every i think so i you need to find you need to find people who will now you need you need pipe pipers who will change the narrative of this country and the narrative has to move away from the current idiom to a new idiom completely i need qualified Tarun. people to do that ha sir 
Tarun, what I would say is yes, that sir. you see, there is no escaping politics. You see, because ultimately we are a democracy where politicians will rule. You know, the problem is that democracy has been truncated in India. You know, uh, people absolutely. go to elections, yes, they absolutely. promise all kinds of things and then don't deliver. So the public doesn't believe the politician any longer. You know, we need to restore democracy in the country. You know, I have been associated with manifesto drafting for a very long time. You know, uh, in the country, you know, from 1989, when uh, Mr. V.P. Singh made me the vice president of the election manifesto drafting committee of the National Front and subsequently other things. So I have believed that, you see, people have to be aroused. People have to take up these issues. See, a Pied Piper may actually go wrong. And I'll give the example of, you know, uh, people say that, uh, you know, a, a, a dictator who's a benevolent dictator you know the, the benevolent dictator will uh, can deliver but you know invariably when you have a dictator over a period of time that dictator becomes an absolute uh, person and therefore misuses power so we had rajiv gandhi who came in with all the promises you know of a country that works the you know country that will modernize he started these various uh, schemes for modernization computerization and so on and so forth but then all of the people around him got involved in corruption cases and scams you know and the you know situation uh, got spoiled you look globally you know uh, all kinds of dictators have you know done massive corruption whether it be abacha in nigeria whether it be marcos in philippines whether it be yahya khan uh, etc in uh, pakistan etc so you know what we need is a greater democratization this consciousness must spread to the lower levels if the consciousness spreads to the lower level then they will demand accountability from the leaders at the moment when you say that the opposition has got decimated they are not able to demand accountability you know and people don't believe in in them very much and these political parties themselves had not been accountable earlier and that's why the problem has become acute you know so i would say we what, what we need to do is strengthen democracy look for ways of strengthening democracy uh, then maybe over a period of time things will improve there's no magic wand uh, which will improve things instantaneously or immediately you know unfortunately we become very impatient and we look for you know a pipe piper or a magic wand you know uh, but societies don't change like that you know uh, history teaches us that you know uh, things are not uh, completely in our control so uh, you know there is a problem that is more long term and let's look for long term uh, rectification of things absolutely so can yeah I can I, I, can I sorry sorry please 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 professor i i cannot agree with you more and i i i want to add to what you said what i meant by pipe piper is not a politician pipe piper what i meant by pipe piper was people like you all who have a lot of uh, economic knowledge uh, and empathy to the problem tell me today sir in india how many newspapers cover you on front page they don't because they don't it's not interesting to them unfortunately that is the problem democracy will get repaired when people like you and whose opinion starts becoming front page news that is when democracy will start getting strengthened that is when people get informed that is when response will be proper currently the, the information is limited therefore the response is bad so tarun uh, i wouldn't put so much faith in myself or what i say uh, because ultimately, you see, it's the people who count, you know, people would bring about change. So ideas, you know, don't spread, uh, you know, that simply. I may give uh, hundreds of lectures over the last few years uh, on a variety of issues, but that reaches only maybe 5,000, 10,000 people over a few years. But when political parties take up issues, they reach millions, you know, and that's when the big change comes. So if you think I... about Gandhi, Gandhi during the national movement, you know, Everything that he did was for the community and for society. Nothing was individual. When he wrote, you know, it was for community. When he did a fast, it was for community. He was trying to raise the consciousness of the people. People's consciousness at that time was even poorer than what it is today. You know, uh, people used to believe that we cannot defeat the British because they rule over half the globe. And yet Gandhi persisted in his nonviolent movement and aroused the consciousness of the people. And even in the quit India movement, not maybe one or two percent of the population came out, but that was strong enough to actually tell the British that they, their time in India is over and that they should leave. So in other words, what I'm saying is that, you see, uh, we can only talk about it 
people have to become conscious and then they have to become active the more active people become the more the change will be uh, the less people are active the less the change would be so you know it's not just what i'm saying but that has to reach large number of people which only the political parties can do even newspapers uh, will not be able to do that so that's why i'm saying it we have to bring all this into the political process and the political parties are very essential part of it but as you rightly said at the moment the opposition parties are very weak they seem to be very despondent but what i find now in these uh, the elections i find that you know uh, some of the leaders the young leaders they are raising the real issues of employment etc they are not Absolutely. being being sucked into the polarizing polarizing issue that the bjp is raising they are trying to avoid that so they seem to have learned that they should not play on the ground that the bjp is uh, playing at they have to create a different ground where the real issues of the people are brought to the fore and i think that's the way to go hmm that's okay, sir. Uh, sir but i think uh, uh, recently one of the bjp mps uh, also he hails from bangalore he in the parliament said that there is no issue of unemployment in india he said that unemployment is only in the minds of uh, you know say the congress party or the people who are running the congress party there is no unemployment on the ground so this denial uh, where does this denial come from because the data says there is unemployment and it's at uh, record levels so you know politicians are very good at uh, changing the narrative you know because they they feel that they have the uh, voice which a large number of people will follow and their followers would then amplify it they have control over social media as tarun rightly put it you know so they feel that they can you know uh, make black into white you know uh, that's what is happening lot of the news that's coming on social media is fake news and lot of people are influenced by that fake news you know so tarun is absolutely right that these are the times where social media is in our pocket social media is influencing a lot of people and therefore people blatantly will tell you falsehoods uh, so this member of parliament uh, he is respectable he is uh, representative of the people we need to respect but respectfully we also need to say your figures are incorrect and if That's your true. figures are incorrect then the public is uh, you know being fooled by by uh, this and parties will do propaganda i mean you, you remember the times when some uh, politician gets caught uh, saying some falsehood uh, and then next day when you know people go to uh, the press goes to him he says no 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 i have been misunderstood you know i did not say it like this i did not say this you know and they flatly deny so this is something old so why the credibility the why the politicians are not worried about credibility because they're losing credibility when you know they say something which is untruth and they don't worry about credibility because they feel that they can uh, ride this uh, rough shot over the public yeah. uh, there is one more question coming in from the comment section i mean what impact does this kind of situation has uh, on the people of the country because on the one hand we see that investments are not coming in but in general there is a feeling of unhappiness or there is a feeling of overall gloom no i i would say that you know it's not that investment is not happening investment will continue to happen but much less than what should happen we need to accelerate the investment so uh, investment is happening and will continue to happen uh, but the point is you see this gloom and doom that is spreading because you see a uh, major community in the country that is now becoming becoming depressed many people who otherwise understand the situation they are getting depressed they don't know how to tackle the situation and that is what is i think uh, damaging the country because it is the the productive people if they begin to feel depressed and they begin to leave and uh, if you notice 30000 of the rich indians have left the country in the last 5 uh, 7 yes. uh, years uh, because they feel that the future here is bleak so if that begins to happen at a wider level then the situation will worsen further and it becomes a chain reaction where as uh, the situation worsens the uh, poor people will suffer more the unemployed will suffer more and therefore it's just a, a terrible chain reaction uh, which we don't know how to get out of hmm. tarun i tarun i want to ask you a very straight question i want to ask you a very straight question today if a brand you have not so many brands in this country today if a brand comes and tells you a uh, say maybe a mobile brand which is possibly your favorite a mobile brand comes and tells you i want to launch in india 
what will your uh, what will your suggestion to that brand or what will your advice to that brand be okay. <clears throat> i will i will respond to you at two levels i want to respond to what arthi asked professor uh, arthi you know what when the covid uh, pandemic came to india we were told to uh, you know bank thalis and uh, light dias and everyone did it across the country till they started losing people in the house when they started losing people in the house they said all this won't work let's go to doctors now take that same uh, example on to your employment till two years back life was quite decent today people are losing jobs in their home a brother is losing his job a father is losing his job so this is no this is now a real issue this is not an issue of someone else it's an issue in the house correct so it it is a very serious issue now to respond to what sujit asked me sujit the reality is that brands have to come launches need to happen uh, earlier we were very free in launching what do we want to launch today there are lots of checks and balances what do we say how do we say it who do we say it to is this the right tone is a wrong tone so we'll have to be really careful but the launch has to happen is that do we have an option so i am i am in the business of business here i can't shut it down no you can't tarun i i completely agree to you but my point is somewhere down the line are we that confident of making a brand successful okay as what we were maybe 10 years back tarun when you and i used to work together we used to handle a brand the kind of confidence we had of making a brand successful if a b c d z is done uh, do we have the same kind of confidence now you 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 can you i don't have to respond to that you see around yourself the number of launches have come down last one year can you don't see much absolutely can you see it happening absolutely uh, dr saab the there is a very there is a very straight question that somebody is asking us a very straight question dr saab yeah. a young uh, I, i i just forgot the i just uh, uh, put that name up i uh, ha firoz mohammad ali is asking us a very straight question uh, dr saab and i think we need right. to give this young man an answer what he is saying is what is the future of indian youth what is our future under these circumstances what will you answer uh, dr saab at the moment it looks rather bleak because you're not going to get a good job you have to be very lucky to be able to get a job in the organized sector the organized sector employs 6% of the workforce and 94% is in the unorganized sector and that's where large number of businesses have been affected adversely either they've closed down or their business has come down and they're employing much less people there's also a great deal of automation that's taking place and with automation you know those who have lower skills they are not going to get jobs uh so the the job situation is going to worsen and the world bank recognizing that the situation is going to work in a uh, uh, worsen because of technology because of the kind of taxation we have uh, globally uh the world bank has recognized that there'll be lack of demand and that's why they're talking about the universal basic income now i am opposed to universal basic income because if you give money free then you don't get dignity if you get productive job then you get dignity as well as you get income so i think we have to do everything to try and create a massive number of you know, you know productive jobs in the economy and it can be done uh, for instance you know if we emphasize education and health much more uh, they are uh, labor intensive and therefore they, they will generate uh, you know a lot of employment in the medical area in the health area and <clears throat> a lot of the educated people will then get jobs at the moment the situation is that there are large number of uh, vacant government jobs teachers jobs etc which are not being filled up so that's a low hanging fruit which can be immediately uh, acted upon uh especially in the field of education the quality is very poor we need to improve the quality of education by employing more people over there and by improving the skills of the 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 teachers uh so it is not that we cannot generate jobs but i think the focus is not there unfortunately we focus on investment but not on the employment generation and given the technology and the taxation situation you know it's generating very few jobs and that's why the situation is bleak as far as the youth is concerned and they must protest and ask uh, for more jobs to be created uh, because without the protest i think the system will continue as it is uh, and things will uh, become worse for the youth in the country arthi can you uh, are yes. you there 
Okay. Yes. Excellent. Well, I think I uh, uh, Sujit ji, you asked uh, one question to uh, Tarun ji, and it was about uh, how much convenient it is or how much comfortable it is uh, for launching a brand in India right now. And I think uh, 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 we should add one more aspect to it. Uh, how much is ease of doing business in India right now? In terms of, you know, even if you have established your business, as he rightly pointed out, that there are lots of checks and balances now. And uh, these checks and balances uh, come in place. You have uh, people boycotting, uh, boycotting the entire situation. Uh, you have people boycotting Zomato for they, uh, you know, promoting a halal meat or you uh, are boycotting some particular brand because in the advertisement, uh, women are not wearing bindis and people actually going out and unsubscribing to that particular, uh, you know, saying that uh, we are cancelling our orders, we are uninstalling the apps and we are uh, doing economic harm to that particular business because it doesn't, uh, you know, suit your uh, sentiments. Tarun sir, would you like to share your views on it? You know, uh, last Diwali, in my view, and this is my view, I may be completely wrong. I think Fab India, the brand, should be given maybe a Bharat Ratna or a Nobel Prize for reviving Indian wear. I think in the last 10 years or 15 years, they revived complete Indian wear. In fact, what you wear is mostly Fab India. They did an ad in last Diwali. Uh, it was a simple ad. And everyone went after them. And they had to withdraw the ad. Now, let me tell you, Fab India is today a global brand. Everyone knows what happens in Fab India. And things like this are just not correct. Why are we doing all this? Why are fringe elements deciding what needs to be done? Uh, are you telling me people who created the brand and people who created a piece of communication are stupid? They are not stupid. They are educated people. They know what to do. They love their brand and they built and they created something. They had to withdraw it. Titan had to withdraw something. I mean, every day there's a story like this because some fringe element is is uh, deciding what needs to be done. How, I mean, somebody at a leadership level need to stop it and say this is not correct. But they keep quiet because it works for them. I think it's wrong. May I add, may I add you know, something to this ease of doing business? You know, yes. we usually think of ease of doing business for the organized sector. But we yeah. don't think of the ease of doing business for the unorganized sector. And the That's unorganized true. sector, which produces 45% of the output and employs 94%, there, the ease of doing business is not improving. You know, there they have problems of marketing, they have problems of finance, they have problem of uh, you know uh, uh, technology. Now, mm -hmm. these are the things that need to be taken care of, but unfortunately, they're not, and that's why the unorganized sector is declining. So, while the organized sector is capable and it can take care of some of their issues, uh, the overall climate may be deteriorating for them to uh, do ease of doing business. But the real problem is for the unorganized sector. And the, if you look at MSME sector, MSME sector has six crore micro units, six lakh small and medium units, and the large units are only 6,000. So it's a factor of 100 between the large, the medium, uh, and the micro sector. And the bulk of the employment is in the micro sector. So I think ease of doing business for the micro sector is very important if we are to take care of the employment situation in the country, you know. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is where I think we need to focus more because the large scale sector can take care of itself uh, to a very large extent. It has the capital, it is able to develop technology and marketing. Yeah. Uh, Dr. let me uh, can I ask you a question? You see, under the circumstances, and Tarun, this is uh, actually for the both of you also, after Dr. Sahab, even if you could uh, answer this. See, under the circumstances, what do you think is better for India? Is private sector better for India or government sectors the psus better for india and you know government running business is better for india what what would be what would be uh, what would be your advice to the government uh, dr uh, dr Sam? you know i i think at this current juncture we need both because you know what the pandemic has taught us is that we need to act as a collectivity and many things have to be taken care of as a collective because the poor people are unable to access the private markets uh, the private markets are too expensive for them so whether it be in banking whether it be in transportation whether it be in other areas the public sector has to play a very important role now the reason why the public sector has a poor image is because they have had massive social obligations because of which their profitability has been low they were not designed to be profitable and therefore we say they're inefficient and therefore we we say that they should go to the private sector which is not to say that there's not corruption which is not to say that there's not overmanning etc air india is an example of that 
but i would say that at this point you know there's no choice of either or i think we need both we need you know for instance uh, the public sector wherever it operates in a area where the private sector is there it can keep a check on prices and various other things because the monopoly power goes down so there are several uses of public sector in a very poor country like india so i would say we need to have a judicious mix of the public sector and the private sector and uh, you know uh, 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 there is no other option as far as i can see tarun what's your take i really think it is you're living in a utopian world if you believe that private sector is going to bail you out uh, it's not possible your public sector infrastructure has to deliver whether it is railways it is postal departments uh, what are it is i mean for manufacturing isros of the world you they just need to start hiring and hiring like crazy because they they like doctors have said that their compulsion of profit is not very high they just need to deliver a, a, a stable company and if they just keep recruiting people i think that will change a lot of sentiment in the country look what happened in bihar for railway recruitment why would you let that happen so all i'm saying is and i want to add to what professor said though i come from a capitalist world it has to be a mixed mixed bag it can't be zero one logic it just can't be zero one logic you have to open up jobs everywhere there are so many government departments where there are jobs sitting vacant hire people left right and center so tarun i may add that you know i am not saying that the public sector will solve the problem of unemployment because you see it's in the organized sector it's not going to generate that many jobs but it can provide services you know especially in the area of education health and those yeah. are critical Absolutely. areas the Absolutely. poor people cannot survive you know without Absolutely. good education uh, without health you know the acer report which points out that you know in the fifth class in the rural areas half the children cannot do second class reading writing or, uh, or mathematics and the, there's a regression because of the pandemic so we need to invest massively in those areas where the people will then come up their productivity will go up and they'll be capable of generating new jobs at the moment you know with only 10% really in a, a good higher education you cannot generate a lot of jobs uh, because of people's entrepreneurship your ease of doing business you need a lot more uh, of people to have a better education and health so that they become productive and they can take entrepreneurial uh, challenges i, I uh, agree with uh, you sir. We, we, sir, i just want to finish one my limited please, point please. was that if you open up government jobs at least it helps the sentiment a little bit our sentiment is very weak now uh, it just energizes the whole correct. system that's all. correct so i see to conclude to conclude whatever we said we have got two more minutes to go to conclude whatever we said i think what doctors have said and what tarun said is a the fact that somewhere down the line we need to our democracy needs to change if the situation has to change the understanding of our democracy needs to change if the situation has to change once the understanding of the democracy changes once the understanding of the leaders changes and the leader starts looking at a long term uh, prospect of this country rather than looking at short term political gains and electoral gains i think we there will be a change in this country this is what i understand long and short of our our discussion tarun what you said and what doctor saab also said is very important that at the moment public sector needs to play a very important role at least to boost the economy to get some work uh, job uh, opportunities opened up and then the private sector can take over private sector is not going to bail out uh, the the economy as is and the, the 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 current situation private you can't depend on private sector to bail out perfectly understood uh, 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 tarun your last word we got exactly 1 minute tarun for you and 1 minute for doctor i you summed it up so nicely what last word can i give you all i am saying is the, i've seen i've seen one question down here saying what's the future of the youth in this country okay this is a passing phase it will go we had a pandemic we had some issues it will go focus on what you need to do do it well and you will find a way out doctor saab always the last word yours you know change requires socio economic movements you know what we have to do is we have to activize the youth we have to activize the people who are suffering if they begin to understand uh, democracy democracy is not an end point either yes or no democracy is a movement democracy changes you know as you know uh, people understand uh, you know uh, accountability more democracy will get strengthened so socio economic movements are needed for large changes and what we are talking about are very large changes 
so that the country can do well. Uh, no great country can copy somebody else's model and become great. It has to have its own understanding of its own issues, try and solve them in its own way. So we can't borrow the China model or the US model or the British model and apply that to India. It has to be an Indian model. And that has to come out of our own socioeconomic movements and our understanding of our country. Brilliant. Thank so, you so much, Doctor. Socioeconomic movement is the is what is required, you know, for large movement, for huge changes. What what well, very well uh, summed up, sir. Very well uh, summed up, Doctor. Thank you so much, Tarun. Thank you so much, Doctor Sam. Thank you so much for being here. And I guess it really made it was an enlightening conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.